Alright, just going to make a video showing how Calvinists like to twist Philippians chapter 1, verse number 29, to prove their Calvinistic false doctrine. Essentially that there's no free will in regards to salvation, that God chooses who gets saved uh, and chooses for those for salvation. You know, it, all, it all, all this ties back to their Calvinistic denial of free will. So let's read it. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 29. It says, for, you, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Now here's what they do. Just like any cult, the Calvinist will base his doctrine off obscure verses out of context like Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. It's important to compare scripture with scripture when dealing with these kinds of, ma kinds of matters. When Paul talks about believing on Christ being given to you, it's important to understand who he is speaking to. Okay, The Gentiles. Romans chapter 11 verse 13 says that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, so he's saying it's been given to you to believe on Christ. Well, what's he referring to? Okay, because remember, he's talking to the Gentiles. Well, compare this with Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6 to 7, and Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. You get some insight on what's going on. Okay, Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6 to 7 says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes and bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6. Isaiah 49 verse 6. And he said, it is, a light, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Okay, what's going on here? Well, this is a prophecy about Jesus Christ being a light to the Gentiles. Okay, what am I saying? Philippians chapter one, verse 29 is simply referring to the fact that God granted the option of salvation to the Gentiles after the Jews rejected it. Okay, for further for further proof of this, uh, compare this with Isaiah, or sorry, not Isaiah, Acts chapter thirteen, verse forty six to forty eight. Okay, that's what it's talking about when it says that belief has been granted to you. It's been granted to you. That's what it's referring to. Uh, Isaiah, or sorry, Acts chapter thirteen, verse forty six to forty eight. Says. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was, a necessary it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you, but seeing, ye put, seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light, to be, to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Okay, that's what it's referring to. God, when the Jews rejected, God granted the option of salvation to the Gentiles. He went to the Jews first, just like Jesus Christ came unto his own, but his own received him not. That's simple. So when they rejected, salvation, the option of salvation, the ability of, you know, the option of, of believing on Christ, came to the Gentiles. That's what it's referring to when it says, you know, he, he you know, uh, what is it granted, you know, or given you, the, the, basically, that belief in Christ has been given to you. That's what it's referring to, paraphrasing, of course. It's not saying that God, you know, for, it, it's not essentially saying that you have no free will and that basically God, that God has to give you the ability to believe. It's not at all what it's saying, you know. Uh, for, and also for further proof of the thing of, um, because like I said, when the Jews rejected the offer of salvation, the offer was then given to the Gentiles. That's what it's referring to in Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. It's rehashing that. Okay, And for further proof of this, compare this with Romans chapter 9 verse 30 to 33 and Romans chapter 11 verse 11. Okay, Romans chapter 11 verse 11. It's that simple. Romans 11, 11. I say then, how they stumbled that they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Who's there? Referring to the Jews. With their fall, their rejection, salvation came to the Gentiles. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have, att have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of unrighteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but, it, but as it were, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. 
As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? That's what's talking about the belief in Philippians 1.29. Okay? Salvation is by faith. Okay? You see, the Calvinists, they have they basically have the cart before the horse. God first regenerates you, then he gives you the act, he gives you the ability to have faith. They have the cart before the horse. No. The the belief that was granted to the granted in Philippians 129 is simply saying, like I said, salvation, the ability of salvation was given to the Gentiles, the option, I'll put it that way, of salvation was given to the Gentiles after the Jews rejected it. And how does that option of salvation come? By faith. So he granted belief to them because he gave them that option of salvation. That's all it, it, the verse is saying. It's not talking about you have no free will in, in, in salvation and God has to give you the ability or, or the act of believing. It's not all what it's saying. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. It's based off twisting scripture and isolating scripture out of context, just like any cult does. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.